Oak Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout, and today was max effort squat day. But just a quick reminder for those of you who watch and enjoy these vlogs every day, please click like down below. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. Be greatly appreciated, and if you guys would run down and click like on all my other videos for the day, I would also appreciate that. Um, the vlogs like these are the only ones that they manage to get the likes higher than the dislikes consistently. So I'd appreciate it if you guys would help out there also. So today we did a few things different. I'll talk more about it moving forward. Um, a lot of this is looking at stuff at joint angle specificity and stuff. Obviously I tried my new bar today, which I said I was going to a few weeks ago. Um, I've had it a few weeks and haven't used it yet. Um, also I'm on a 13 inch box. Yes, I've taken some shots from the side when I sit back on it correctly to see where I'm at in relation to my knee with my hip crease and everything and it's just at parallel or hair under and it may not always look exactly like it from this angle but I have checked it um, and that's that's what matters is what's it going to look like from the side so it, it's good enough and the other thing is that it's not going to matter because it's, I'm going to get the carryover anyways I just have to get used to all this wide stance stuff I'll use the wide stance um, hip belt squats and everything and to continue to work on that but I need to be able to explode from my hair higher up, right? I need to only have to worry about breaking just below parallel and then driving through that sticking point. That's going to mean needing to use some heavier weights. Done quite a bit of work on a really low box lately, and I think this is going to give me my best overall squat when I go to a wide stance squat uh, because it allows me to really train the wider stance better. I, I need to work on getting all the way out to the edges of the rack all the time and to get my heels further out as I do it, you know, so it's more toes forward. But this bar was interesting. Um, I'm going to have to talk about this bar more in the future. I needed to establish a max because I want to run it for speed work next wave coming up next week. But it didn't really get start getting hard until I got past 450, you know, and it felt different. It's just hard to balance. But man, this was uh, 485. It's like, that wasn't bad. It's like, okay, I knew I had another jump. 505 felt hard. 505 was hard. Um, to the point to where I'm like, I'm going to stop there. This is a new bar. I've never used it before. I don't want to push all the way out because this one was a little slow. And I'm also getting used to this slightly higher box and a new bar. I'll take the 505. I had some people say you probably could have got more and you're probably right. Uh, but it might have been hard. It would have been grindy as hell if I had made another jump. Not to say that I couldn't have, because again, the speed was decent on this, but it felt slow. Okay, And the thing that's interesting with that bar is the way it swings. The way it swings. Um, but also, we're going to notice I'm adjusting all my supplemental work. I went ahead and made a bump on this one to 230, and I hit failure. On rep 10 of my final set, I hit failure. And how do you tell failure on a good morning? Your knees buckle. You go to bring it up with a hip hinge and it's just too heavy and then the knees totally buckled i had to squat it up on the last rep and i'm going to start maxing on good mornings coming up they're going to be in the rotation so i better get used to handling some heavy good mornings they will be in the max effort rotation um, and they're going to continue to be a mainstay in my training and i'm going to push them super hard i've now come to a point in my training to where now the volume is still very high um, anyone who thinks i'm not doing high volume I really don't know what to tell you. Um, I mean, it's a lot of sets. A lot of sets. And we're talking like up to 20 sets of body parts still. Okay, and that's not counting my restoration days. People say, what do you mean restoration? Well, like Sunday, I did a bunch of loaded carries. Five sets of reverse hypers, neck work, ab work. I do a lot of rear delts um, at the end of my workouts after I get totally done. I don't feel the need to get on camera an hour after I already filmed these and do band pull-aparts. I try to do a couple sets of band pull-aparts in my main workouts so that I get something like 8 to 10 sets, extra sets for rear delts every week. And my rear delts have been coming up. They need it. I'm going to feel like my shoulder health is improving too. I've noticed messing with some stuff with this new camera. I went to check and see what my range of motion looks like and I feel like I'm able to actually lock out overhead presses now using the bar. So I've been doing some different stuff working on my shoulders and a lot of it has to do with that. It has to do with specific exercises of me rethinking the shoulder mobility stuff I've been doing. But we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. So the good mornings. Um, again, new weight, 
but I can only get nine on the final set. So we're going to stick with this weight and try to push it out. Try to push it out, see if it keeps stalling, and we may have to go to a different bar. And this bar is very hard. This bar is hard for me. And one of the things that people notice is that I do sit back more as the weight goes up. And people would say, why? Well, it's to counterbalance. Okay. When you're doing good mornings, when you're using half of your body weight or two-thirds of your body weight, you can lean a lot further forward, right? This is more than I weigh. Okay, I stepped on the scale at 223 this morning. So yeah, I was at 230 when I started trimming down recently. 223 is what I've been at for several days now. Right there, failed. But the thing is, is it's you can't lean as far forward. You have to put your hips further back in order to keep the bar midfoot. You have to. Because if it drifts outside of midfoot, guess what? It's more than you weigh. And this was awkward, but I decided to go ahead and put these up on mats to get more height and try to use my loading pin. Why? I need a wider stance. Okay, I need these hip belt squats to build my wide stance squat. And this, because if we have them wider like this, it forces a wider box angle. Okay, I need wide stance like this. This is how I need to squat. Right? This is what I need to be able to squat. And so I need to build the musculature of this. This is why all my box squats are wide. These need to be wide. And again, I can kind of tell based upon where my rack is of how wide these are going, but these need to be the same thing. This needs to be the width of my rack. It needs to be the width of my rack. So I need this to carry over. And yes, this is 10 pounds less, but it's a wider stance that I've been using. It's a hair wider. Okay, it's harder. And I got two sets of 20, and I, I got like 18 on the last one. I'm like, I just can't do any more. And I may drop down to like 10s or 12s at some point. I may start just working the tension up, because why? We are going to push phases of tension, right? We want to get as strong as possible without going below 10 reps on all these movements. Destroy 10 rep maxes. Get really strong at them. And that's going to include even my reverse hyper, and I'm changing the way I do the reverse hyper to accommodate that. Everything needs to be about being strong, and anything that's really lightweight, I can do as restoration. All right, I can come in and do really high rep stuff for restoration work. And that includes my reverse hypers. It includes rear delt work, all that stuff. That's fine. My real training, though, we really need to push tension for a while. Quality volume. So I need to get as strong as I can at all these supplemental lifts. I need to keep rotating through these things. Same thing, I'm going to even adjust my speed work a hair to compensate. Because I'm using bands, I probably don't need quite as many sets as I'm doing. Doesn't mean I'm going to drop down anything stupid like five. But I need to explode as hard as I can. And I can't be worried about, oh no, holding back because I have so many sets to do. Okay, I need to keep, I focus on that explosion. Rotate bars. Rotate bars, stick with bands. Okay, power, power, power. But I need all this supplemental work to make me stronger too. So we need to make sure that we are getting solid hypertrophy from all of it, right? We need quality hypertrophy. That means quality volume. So I need to be getting stronger with these 10 rep at 12 rep or 15 or whatever rep sets I'm doing, but mostly 10s. So even with the hip belt squats, um, as I get used to that belt, the belt though is just can still be uncomfortable. No matter what you do, it always digs. Like down here, I've got it low enough, but it really digs kind of at that hip crease. It's not as bad wider, though. It just hurts in a different way. Final set, I got 18, but I really need to start bumping the weight up and just take them to limit sets. You know, and if that pushes me down to 10 or 12, then I'll deal with it. But even then, three sets of 10 all-out reps put a lot of meat on my quads and adductors and everything. Because really, we need to build the adductors. It's a lot of this, especially when I'm not sumo pulling. We're relying on box, mainly speed boxes and these to build all those muscles. Okay, tension is going to matter. It's going to be that balance between tension and volume. But again, my, by me using my loading pen, um, as long as I'm willing to stack the boxes higher, that extra inch mattered. It made all the difference, adding that extra inch to those boxes to where I'm not having to tap the floor so much. And if I have to, if I start getting deeper on them, then I'll, I'll put another mat under, right? We'll stack it up another inch. But it's the beauty of having the Eva foam pads. Everything is adjustable. But we need to get stronger on these too. To get a lot stronger on these. 
Okay, that's how we get the 600 squat. We've got to keep building everything. Quads, entire posterior chain, upper back, all of that has to get stronger. Has to get stronger. And I've got to be able to do good mornings and I need the upper back. Because if I have to good morning a squat, then so be it. It doesn't matter. I'll lock it. My good morning gets strong enough. Something happens in a, with a heavy max. I start getting pulled forward. If I'm strong enough on good mornings, I'll just push through. Uh, went up another inch on these and still got 12. We still got 12 on the 8-inch elevation on all three sets. Um, but again, it's great for my grip. This is one of my premier grip movements. And because I'm doing so much low back work, and because I'm working the reverse hyper, I don't care about pen lays. And that's a point that needs to be made. I have had people like, well, can I take pen lays out? I'm like, do you have a reverse hyper? And one of my clients wanted to do that. I'm like, no, your low back is, is not going to get enough work. You know, you can't go to all inverted rows and chin-ups. Right? And you don't have a reverse hyper. You don't have that. I'm using mine like every day. Well, maybe not my upper body days. My three off days, I do a ton of volume with it. Now I'm focusing on removing the momentum. Then we went to shrugs. These are a little harder. I went up another 10 pounds. And because I do the inverted rows first, my grip is already fatigued. And I want these to train my grip. You know, you get people again, well, your grip could be a limiting factor. Well, it is on these to some extent. So what? It's extra grip work. It's trap and grip work. I need the extra upper back. That's why I lean forward. I need my middle traps to get work to, not just the upper traps. All right, not just the trap you see from the front, guys. Not saying that doesn't matter. But we need the whole trap to grow. I need the upper back, thoracic spine, traps, everything. All of it. So I would do all those safety bar good mornings. Okay. But yeah, grip started slipping on this one. So on the final set, I realized um, I might need to take a break. And I did. I did like eight reps, then set it down for a second, then cranked out three more. So that I got 11 to make up for the that. So it ended up being good grip work, good upper back work. I definitely still feel it all in my upper back. And it's good to train those things together, right? Because there is a correlation between upper back strength and grip strength. There's some data on it that training your upper back alone can increase grip strength. But in this, I want to train them together in this case. This is a good lift to hit all of that. Make sure I'm getting extra grip work in. And particularly on a barbell. Because most of my grip work is not on a barbell. All right, my speed pulls, my max pulls, I guess. So then, this was hard, guys. I went ahead and went with 50% of my max on my squat. And said, okay, I want to stop using inertia. So I stopped in the middle of some of these trying to make the inertia stop so that I was forced to use my glutes and hamstring and back to lift it. And it's so much harder. Um, and I'm gonna do this for a while. I'm gonna work off of percentages of squats and things. Try to get as strong as I can on this as a strength exercise. I got really good at using the, the momentum and the inertia and it creates a really profound, nice feeling in my low back, but it's just so easy to just add weight. I was at the point where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to 500 pounds next, 425 because it's not really difficult past a certain point. So now I'm like, well, let me see if I can just use it as a strength building tool, right? And hypertrophy tool. And I'm still gonna do restoration work. I'm gonna try to control it more so that I get better at this on my off days. And I did like five sets of 25 on Sunday using only 135. And this is 270. And this is really challenging for sets of 10. This was really challenging. Really challenging. I guess my back, since I'm dropping some body fat, my back is starting to look a little bigger. So I guess that's good. Down seven pounds. We'll, we'll see eight more pounds. We'll assess where I'm at there. At 215, I'll reassess what I need to do. I'll, I may need to cut further. I don't know. We'll decide how my strength is going. But it's going to be slow either way, but a good workout. These were hard to do, though, to get all 10. Uh, but I got them, so I hope it has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.